This has to be the most disappointing generation of gaming CPUs that we've ever seen in terms of gaming performance uplift from both AMD and Intel. Uh, we're hot off the uh, you know Zen 5% memes where we saw uh, you know in, in places like Hardware Unboxed that at least in gaming performance, uh, the ninth generation is basically tied with the seven series processors and their counterparts and came out at a higher price than what the 7000 series was actually selling for. Now there were larger gains in certain workloads, but those workloads aren't gaming. So for the gamers out there, Zen 5% was incredibly disappointing. And now Intel has basically been handed a softball where they could have easily taken the gaming performance crown if they made literally any meaningful generational gaming performance increase. And it is now official from Intel on the slide behind me that their new high-end flagship processor is not faster than the 14900K, although they are highlighting that it can match the 14900K with significantly better energy efficiency. So, uh, also, why is this slide behind me all crazy with all this red text, and how am I getting this information? So this slide, if we translate it from Chinese, uh, is supposed to have its review embargo lift on October 10th, when we're expecting Intel to make its official announcement. So this is one of the uh, Chinese language versions of one of, uh, of Intel's official slides for announcing Arrow Lake. Uh, so again, on October 10th, we should see the official version of this, but we're getting it early. All the crazy red text was hand-painted by me. And by hand-painted, I mean I was highlighting each line with Google Lens and allowing uh, Google to machine translate it for me, and then I was uh, copy and pasting the result and putting it over here so we can actually see what games are being talked about, what does the fine print say, all of that. So we're looking at the Chinese language slide official from Intel, so this is first party numbers. In other words, this isn't independent reviews, this is straight from Intel. So they're going to want to paint their new generation in as good a light as possible. But even in their tests here, they are not claiming better gaming performance than the 14900K. They're claiming to basically be uh, a huge leap in performance per watt. So getting similar performance at a reduced power consumption. And that is certainly welcome. Uh, Intel's uh, 13th and 14th gen CPUs have famously been uh, having all sorts of uh, early degradation issues, causing stability issues, and uh, it would be kind of, uh, you know, reasonable to assume that that is at least partially related to uh, pushing their chips a lot harder uh, in order to, uh, you know, then is maybe uh, safe <laughs> in order to try to get every last uh, bit of performance out of it. So if their next generation is dialing that back a bit, that explains why they're not also taking a performance lead uh, over their previous generation. But that doesn't change the fact that from the gamer's perspective as a consumer, if we want to buy a new gaming CPU, the new generation of processors from Intel does not make any claims at being any better than the 14th generation, which was just a renamed 13th generation, uh, which was a bit better than the 12th generation at least. And then again, like I said, AMD famously delivered Zen 5%. So they, they also didn't really make a generational leap here. Um, anyway, let's take a little more detail uh, look at these slides and we have a couple of them. Uh, so this is kind of the, the summary of the two generations. Also, for those of you who haven't been following the, the rumors on all of this closely, notice that this is not the 15th gen processors from Intel. There is a branding change. It is now the Intel Core Ultra 9, and their high end here is the 285K. Uh, whereas previously we had the Intel Core i9 14900K. So notice you don't have the i9, you have the Ultra 9, and it's not going from 14th gen to 15th gen. We're starting back over again here with the uh, 285K. So we're in the 200 series of Core Ultra processors. So bit of a branding change, naming scheme change here. 
as we jump past the 14th gen. But this is definitely the successor to the 14900K, and Intel is even showing that in their own slide as showing these side by side. And they're showing that their new, four, uh, uh, well, uh, not 15900K, but their 285K is hitting 261 FPS on average in their tests, as opposed to 264 FPS on average for the 14900K, which they are calling flat average FPS. So essentially the same FPS, although it should be noted, the new generation is technically slightly slower even in Intel's own testing. However, uh, I translated this as system power, so they're showing that the system was at 527 watts for their 14900K, and their system power for the Ultra 9 285K is at 447 watts, uh, which is 80 watts less. But again, they're not being specific on what that system was and what settings the 14900K were running at. Was that you know, pushed past its efficiency curve or is that running at one of the more uh, conservative profiles? Are we, uh, you know, using, I'm assuming we're using the RTX 4090, uh, which, which can consume a lot of watts on its own. So, I mean, that, that kind of makes sense why our power numbers look like this, but I'm just saying it does leave some stuff here, but it's definitely claiming uh, a big efficiency gain well as the performance is basically staying the same. Now that brings us to this slide again, uh, where they give us a lot more detail in terms of the specific games that we're looking at. Again, their headline for this is a huge leap in gaming performance per watt in gaming scenarios. Raptor Lake R reduces system power consumption by up to 165 watts at the same frame rate. Again, they said up to, and on this slide, they're change, uh, only claiming 80 watts lower. Uh, so they're saying, you know, there are situations where it's more dramatic, but anyway. Uh, so the other interesting thing here is they're pointing out certain system power consumption numbers in specific game situations. Um, uh, and now notice it's not listing this though as a 58 watt system power consumption number. They're showing a downward arrow. So I would interpret this as uh, the new generation processor is using 58 watts less total system power uh, than the 14900K. This would be 34 watts less. This would be 165 watts less. And this would be 136 watts less. And again, you can look at these specific games that those line up with, like the 136 watts. I've translated that as Age of Myth Mythology retelling. So is that, uh, is retelling maybe a mistranslation? You know, you've got to deal with the machine learning translation. I didn't think too hard about lining it up with the English, t English title, but you get the idea. Uh, we're seeing, again, 165 watts less in uh, Warhammer Space Marines 2. And we're seeing 58 watts less in... Uh, if we track that down to Total War uh, Pharaoh. So that's the idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, the other thing we should mention is they are saying that they're using Intel APO. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Intel APO, uh, that is their, uh, it's like application optimization profile. The point is, I think it's like a little separate app uh, that kind of helps, again, with specific game optimization, but specific games need support for that. Um, and it is, I think, a separate program that you have to kind of have up and running last time I looked into it. Um, anyway, so uh, they're also claiming that when they're listing things as par, they're, they're listing those as within 3% plus or minus uh, when, the, when they're uh, making that claim. Anyway, so you can see the games overall. So this slide is, again, essentially showing similar performance to last gen and at a lower power consumption. So lower power consumption isn't nothing. That was a huge problem with Intel CPUs last generation. Uh, but again, if you're just looking for more gaming performance, you're not gonna find it here. Uh, next, we also have them comparing up against the 7950X3D. Now the 7950X3D is AMD's seventh gen processor, um, which, uh, is one of its top gaming performers, but not its top, and one of its top multi-core performers, but not the top, and that's important to line up against here. Uh, for example, if we ju jump to a hardware unboxed review for their uh, the ninth generation processors, we can see that the 7950X3D is a top gaming processor, but actually the 7800X3D generally performs better. Now, why would that be? Uh, well, the 7950X3D, for one thing, has two CCDs, one of them with the 3DV cache, one of them without. 
And so if the game was uh, maybe doing some things on the, uh, the CCD without vCache instead of on the CCD with vCache, that could be things, um, you know, but for a variety of reasons, generally the eight core 16 thread part that has all eight cores with 3D vCache generally in, in games outperforms the uh, 16 core part where only half the cores have 3D vCache. So again, um, keep that in mind when you're now looking at this slide uh, where Intel's measuring their gaming performance up against the 7950X 3D. Because also note that they're really not claiming a win against the 7950X 3D. And if they can't even win against the 7950X 3D, and the uh, again, if we look at uh, other review data, we see the 7800X 3D is currently faster than the 7950X 3D. Uh, this is indicating that Intel's new flagship will still not be able to beat the 7800X 3D, uh, which again should already be indicated by the fact that it can't beat a 14900K, and the 14900K generally doesn't beat the 7800X 3D. So uh, there's all of that. Now again, they're also claiming the multi-core content creation performance though is a win. So they're saying, well, they're you know roughly on par with the gaming performance of the 7950X 3D, that they can beat it in multi-core uh, uh, performance workloads for content creation. Now, that's another interesting thing to look at because again, the 7950X 3D, while it does have uh, 16 cores, because of the 3D vCache, it's actually clocked slower than the uh, non-3D vCache parts uh, from AMD. So that is another thing to keep in mind, which is if you're just looking for content creation, if we look at like a hardware unboxed uh, Cinebench score, uh, we can see that the 7950X 3D is no slouch, um, but the non-X3D 7950X generally outperformed it, and so does the newer 9950X, especially if you use PBO. So it might be interesting to see in content creation how the 9950X stacks up against Intel's new 285K, uh, because notice that despite the fact that the 9950X is out, uh, we're not seeing that, that comparison, at least in this slide that's been leaked early. Um, that, that we're able to, to see here. So just little details uh, to look at. Also, you can always compare, you know, okay, what games are they showing? Because they're showing some games uh, when they're looking at those gaming tests. But remember, Intel clearly did test a lot more games. So there's always the question, why are you showing fewer of them? Is it just for the slide because you're, you're using some space for games and some space for content creation? Or are you, you know, uh, picking and choosing which ones that you show? And on that note, let's look at the last slide, which we actually, wait a second, we do have a comparison against the 9950X. But notice the 9950X comparison isn't showing the, you know, the, the Cinebench scores and things like that. It's showing the gaming performance, where remember the 9950X doesn't outperform the gaming performance of uh, a 7800X 3D. So this is not AMD's top-end gaming CPU. And that's, again, important to look at. So uh, Intel is showing gaming performance against the 9950X, not AMD's best gaming CPU. So anyway, <laughs> and again, when they showed the content creation, they showed the content creation up against not quite the best content creation CPU from AMD. So just highlighting what we're seeing, the, the choices being made here. Another thing I'm gonna note on this slide with the 9950X is I noticed when I was, cause I translated this one first, this is the one up against the 14900K. Um, I was trying to copy and paste these and move them over to this slide but I couldn't. Not only was the, the order out of order, which was fine, I tracked it down, but this Star Wars Outlaws shows up here and it didn't show up on this slide against the 14900K. I also noticed that Total War Warhammer 3 Madness is showing up in this slide deck, uh, sorry, in this slide on, uh, uh, in the deck, but it's not showing up on this slide. And notice that this particular inclusion, the Total War Warhammer 3, uh, is the biggest gain, uh, the biggest win for the 285K up against the 9950X. So the largest outlier in favor of Intel on this slide 
uh, happens to be a, a game that they chose not to show when comparing against the 14900K. And I just wanna bring that up because again, we are not looking at third party independent numbers here. We're looking about Intel's first party slides. So cherry picking games is certainly a thing that they do. And don't read that as me saying that, but AMD doesn't. Remember AMD has been called out over and over again on this channel as well as others for their marketing for their 9000 series, not at all living up to what actually showed up in third party reviews. So I'm just saying Intel can be guilty of that too. Hey, look, we suddenly have this game show up as a big outlier when it wasn't in the previous slide. Interesting. Anyway, um, we don't need to read too much into that because there's still a large game set to look at. And overall, they're basically kind of claiming parity with the 9950X in gaming performance in this set of games. They lose some, they win some, a bunch of them are, are so close that you'd call it a tie. And again, remember that if we then relate that to the wider world of processors, the 9950X is not, any, uh, not as fast in gaming as the 7800X 3D. So we would assume then that uh, if you have a 7800X 3D, Intel is not gonna be able to beat it. And AMD hasn't beaten it yet either, uh, unless we get a maybe a 3D V-cache version for the 9000 series, which we are expecting sooner than later. However, I wonder if AMD was planning on rushing out that 9800X 3D in case Intel could beat the 7800X 3D. And if Intel can't beat the 7800X 3D, then does AMD still rush that out? Now, maybe that's already in motion. It's too late to slow it down or anything. I'm just curious. Also, if their 9000 series isn't selling to gamers right now, maybe they need to get the 9800X 3D out anyway, just to get people to upgrade, um, even if it's not versus Intel. Now, my final thoughts on all of this though, is if there is a big efficiency win, uh, like Intel's claiming here, I wonder if you're willing to do manual overclocking, if you are actually gonna be able to get a lot out of these chips uh, with that overclocking. Because it really feels like the 14th gen processors, especially like the 14900K, were just pushed to the edge and maybe past the edge they should have been pushed to on some silicon uh, right out of the box. And if we're dialing back that power consumption considerably for the 285K, it's at least possible and reasonable to assume that there may be more overclocking headroom available, um, which would at least be more interesting to see if an overclocked 285K uh, could be uh, better than you know the top end AMD gaming chips when they're overclocked. So that's at least something there. Uh, but in general, I've got to say that, like I said, this seems to be the worst uh, year, you know, the worst generational advancement in gaming, uh, gaming performance specifically that we've ever seen. AMD could barely beat their previous generation processors at gaming by such an insignificant margin, it's basically a tie. And Intel is now claiming that they don't actually beat their previous generation product in gaming performance, although they can roughly match it at better energy efficiency. So we basically get absolutely no win in gaming performance this generation from either AMD or Intel, unless somewhere else down the product stack something happens because we did also get a leak of just the whole lineup. So there's not just a 285K coming out, there's a bunch of other processors. Here's the full lineup if you wanna take a look. Now, maybe somewhere down this line, uh, some of these parts beat their previous generation counterparts. So maybe the top end gaming performance doesn't get better, but maybe there's good value and good, good gaming performance to be had uh, somewhere in the product stack uh, compared to the previous generation. We'll have to see. It is good to see efficiency getting better. I don't wanna throw that out the window as like efficiency is irrelevant, but if you wanted to chase a higher end gaming performance, we're not seeing it here. And I might make a whole other video on the fact that GPUs keep getting wider, more cores, more performance. Are CPUs keeping up? Because there are definitely CPU bottleneck games out there um, if you're on high-end GPUs, even if you're on high-end high -end CPUs. 
Um, and it'll be interesting to see where this trend continues. All right, guys, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section. If you wanna support what I do here, you can always click the join button uh, to become a channel member, and you can read the little benefits that, that, that you get for that. Uh, and huge thank you for everybody who has, but also a huge thank you to just viewers, subscribers, commenters. Uh, you're all beautiful people, and I hope you have an excellent day.